do you like football more or less than when you started hashtag what a great question that is i think i'd be lying if i said i like it more and that's not to take away from anything i do here i would always say as the owner of the club my job is not to win the games that's yeah. the manager's job my job is to win the seasons all those things combined i think they do probably make you like football less because you're less emotionally attached to it and it becomes more of a job and it becomes more of a sort of i'm at the home of hashtag the new home a home i've not been to before and i'm joined by the home owner soon to be Potentially, please welcome Spencer FC. Spencer, how oh, are you? Well, you seem to be because we haven't got our own ground yet. Is that what you mean? Yeah, well, I mean, I've, I've not been to this place, but this is what very nice. Yes, yeah, lovely. Because you went it? to the old one. Yeah. So, vibes, how does it compare? I've not eaten the food yet because the food okay. at the last place was. <laughs> I'm not, I'll try the other food here, but uh, it's, uh, it's... This viewing gallery we've got here is quite decent, really, isn't it? Especially as the weather gets cold, we can sit in here, yeah. great view, enjoy everything. It's a bit Porn Sandwich Brigade. Well, it's quite yeah. interesting because, um, spoiler alert, I used to, Spencer used to be my boss. Well, associate. It, associate. But the set that we built back then was trying to incorporate a view like this. It's pretty much, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, but now you've got it. How do you feel? Yeah. No, it's decent. So if you don't know, this is called Avely. Yeah. Um, and both our men and women's teams play here. So our women have actually been here for a few years now, but our men joined in the summer. And it's got a brand new pitch. Avely are in the National League South. So they had to put a brand new... They already had a 4G, but this is a higher spec one they put on in the summer. So we get to benefit from that, obviously. It means games never get called off, which yeah. is great. It actually does give you an actual advantage on, on the pitch because a lot of teams do get games called off and then they get a backlog of matches. Nice. Um, and I mean, it's just, you can't complain, can you? It's, yeah. it's, it's for this level. It's unbelievable. Um, I want to talk about hashtag, but I want to, you know, Niles here, he's a big fan. You know, big sadly time. I have to admit that I'm, I'm a big fan as well. Um, I want to talk about your YouTube because the critics, not criticism, but the one question, you know, we, we did the uh, football manager gig the other, we were having some deep chats down by the bar, but the question you always get at the moment is why aren't you uploading? Mm. So, you are uploading, mm. but why aren't you uploading? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's what I always say. I, say, I am making videos. I'm yeah. just making them on the hashtag channel. And we do make some videos on the old Spencer FC from time to time when, yeah. when the brand comes in. Yeah, he's like, when the money's rolling, that's when I start rolling. No, or, or just, you know, I've got my sort of staple ones, like my Premier League predictions and stuff I do every year. Um, I mean, it's very difficult to give a short answer to that question. The, the easiest answer is hashtag takes up loads of my time. Yeah. And I, I got to a point where I had to sort of really, you know, I like to do, I'd rather do one thing or a couple of things really well than lots of things. And I felt like with my channel, these other channels and this balancing act and, you know, I'm a parent now, I've got two kids, like all these things, you, you've got to try and focus on a few. And hashtag for me, I'm using YouTube and I'm using my expertise that I've gained over the years to run a football club. Whereas if you're just a sort of more of a jobbing YouTuber, I think you're a bit more of a slave to the algorithm and all these things, which don't, I don't really like. I was talking about today, actually, I went to university to do a talk and it was like, I think if I tried to actually keep up with the YouTube algorithm and all that stuff, I think I'd be out the game already. I think yeah. I would have either retired myself or I'd have been retired by the audience essentially, because I, I'm not good at that stuff. You go back to like the glory day of Spencer FC and everyone always talks about the Wheel of Fortune and Zerati Kid and all these FIFA series. They're the least like optimised YouTube content you could ever see. Same thumbnail every time, same title every time, no clickbait, just 25 minute videos of me playing The glory FIFA. days. And really, over the years, if I've ever tried to hone that or ever tried to change that to be more like what you're told works, it yeah. doesn't work for me. No, no. People, I'm like a legacy YouTuber at this point. They want it how it used to be. Well, and I think like when we worked together, that was sort of uh, around the World Cup 2022, wasn't it? And you were looking at trying to uh, bring back your channel. Yeah. And like, you know, when we were doing it back then, obviously bought in the new set, we were doing we were mainly on Twitch, but doing YouTube stuff. But then it sort of felt like a new dawn, even for, for me as an audience, but then working with you with like, you know, like Mark was obviously Mark. We just did the Euros. He's churning out every single game with mm. with the team and everything like that. Rory, like, yeah, do, yeah, yeah. do you just where do you think the state of YouTube is now for you? So people like Mark, who's like obviously industry leading, like that. They're the people you're competing and with. and a great boss. Great man, great man. And you're trying to get into it. Like, well, I was trying to get back into it, wasn't I, for a yeah, bit? Yeah. And I was sort of having to build it around live streams because of my schedule, really, because it allowed me to do it, get out, and it be a thing, not have to sort of. But. I realised quite soon into that, you know, that I was never going to have not only the availability and, and sort of regular appointment to film as much content as you need to to keep up with everyone else, but also the desire, quite frankly. Like, I, I didn't enjoy it like I maybe did in an earlier time of my yeah. life. And, um, and that was down to me, said, really, wasn't well, it? It was, it was the company, ultimately. But, <laughs> no, but if you remember, also, we had a terrible business deal fail at Hashtag well, I mean, at the yeah, time, yeah. which basically just took the wheels off everything. And uh, yeah. well, do you, like, this is from an outside perspective, well, it's sort of inside-outside perspective, I feel like obviously that was horrible and horrendous, but like ultimately, 
that probably just put the nail in the coffin a bit of it. Not the nail in the coffin, yeah. but like made you realise essentially probably brought was, it to sharper focus. There was a deal we had, a hashtag that was a five year deal we were one year into that was a, it was our biggest deal, it was the most money we brought into the club and yeah. it died overnight when the company went bust and essentially meant yeah, that money wasn't coming in. Mm-hmm. And not only we, we got a new deal in the end, but that for that one year we were down like hundreds of thousands of pounds and yeah. obviously that's got to come from somewhere. So um it, that that just it just re 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 uh, you have to reestablish your priorities a little bit and stuff like that happens. But um, but no, it was a really good experience doing that and learning that. And we still use that set a lot, and we've incorporated it into a lot of things. But I don't think I'll ever be a kind of well, certainly not like a daily uploader, like no. stuff like that again. And um, you know, massive credit to people that do it. I did it for a couple of years, maybe, and it, and it probably got us to where we are now for that time. But it's never a long term. I just don't, I just don't have the that that mentality. Where anymore. do you stand on like the state of YouTube football? Because I think a lot of people can say it's this and that, but for me, it just feels like it's a big pie. And if you like your tactics, you can have a little bit of Statman, have a little bit of Allcott. If you want your pub chat, you can have a bit of Mark, have a bit of Rory. If you want your your big experiential videos, you can have Chris MD. Like, do you still watch stuff? Do you still enjoy yeah, it? Obviously, if you actually want to watch YouTube sort of football itself, you've got us, you've got all these other great got yeah, yeah. Dons, Beatties, Squad, all these guys, you know. So there's lots of stuff on there. Um, do I still watch it? To be honest, I've never watched it. No? And that's not just a football thing. I've never really watched YouTube. Well, I know there's some YouTube that you watch. There's a... Like, there's like Pokemon a, stuff. What were you trying to show me when we were football? Pokemon football. now football. My, little, my little boy. And there's other stuff. No, honestly, like genuinely, I've never been... You like that camping stuff? Camping? What are you yeah, talking about? Yeah, you know, like they're out in the Hebrides and they're like away for six days. You showed me that before. Did I? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. You lost me there. I mean, there is stuff I watch on YouTube. What, what I guess I meant by that is like, I've never been my target audience. I've never been someone who makes, who, who sits and watches YouTube. I have people I follow that may or may not be on YouTube and I watch their content from time to time. Obviously, I think it's impossible to not do that nowadays. But um, the world now obviously has a whole generation of people that go to YouTube for their content and have yeah. multiple channels they watch and things. I've never really been that. I mean, you get a lot, I know you get a lot of your American sports stuff, your wrestling stuff, all the stuff you're into yeah. through YouTube. Is that common knowledge? Or not? That's fine, yeah. <laughs> I think if but, I'm trying to hide I'm a wrestling fan yeah, now, yeah, I'm doing a real bad job. But the, um, <laughs> But yeah, I think that I think that I I yeah, like those guys are all great. All yeah. the guys we talked about. I, I also think like social media the way it is now, you see these clips on Instagram and stuff. And you almost don't need to go onto YouTube. I've got this thing. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. I've got this thing at the moment. We were saying to my little boy, which is like about you know. Don't forget to hashtag. I, it. I think <laughs> I think that. Um, that as a society, like, and I, I only can interpret this from my own experience. So maybe this isn't as prevalent for other people as it is for me. But we've sort of drifted into this, this, these patterns where we're just becoming like what I would say is like watchers and not doers. So I say to my little boy, I'm like, you're watching what I want to watch TV. I want to watch TV. Are you a watcher or a doer? And it's like, what I mean by that is, it's obviously fine to watch stuff. I, I make, I'm in this industry. I make content. But are you watching something because it's good and you yeah. heard it's good or you want to watch it or you want to learn about it or you want to further better your own life by watching it? Or are you falling into a routine where you sit at a certain time of the day and look for something to watch? Yeah. Because I think the latter is very dangerous, especially like now that there's content sort of everywhere, like... isn't there? Yeah. So you're not, you, you could be sitting here waiting for this game to start and watch something on YouTube for 30 minutes when you're missing out on potentially conversations with people, yeah. you're missing out on things that are happening in the world. So I'd like to know the average length of people having a dump. I reckon that's oh. gonna Because like, so I've, I've, I'll be honest, I've come away with needles in my leg I've been, all the time yeah i get it all the time yeah. and but mine's usually of, playing chess one minute bullet games any challenges out chess. there add me on chess.com you had to that man dave under the table didn't you all day long mate one thing i was going to say as well just talking about that as well when we were having these beers late night at footy man we were sat i think ciders uh, ciders uh what did i have a little you might have had a bit yeah yeah sometimes a cider um but the way youtube has changed so much as well so like it was going to be basically asking you would you do youtube now if you were coming into it but i think when we both like started watching it in the heyday of it it was still sort of like this niche thing like my mm, mates mm. who are into it now because like, you know a lot about youtube history i, was like, I know yeah. too yeah yeah but between me and me. dr benji it's yeah. uh, be a real niche horrible quiz but like it feels now it's like a job isn't it that you could get into yeah, but back yeah. then it was like you watch youtube who are you watching charlie's so cool like and some of the ones that you probably can't even say the names yeah. of now. i mean it's just a completely different concept yeah isn't it like it used to be like a, a profile like myspace page you know that's what the channel even physically looked like it yeah, yeah. Look like it does now and it was um 
very niche yeah. like the the biggest sort of first and the earliest kind of genres to succeed on youtube were, were genres that didn't have like representation elsewhere so like gaming was a great example of that there'd, there'd be no gaming hub of content because it, it'd come up with the internet yeah so there wasn't like tv channels for gaming all this sort of thing and you know a lot of these sort of more niche things and then your bigger niche is got into YouTube and got a bit more successful in there. And then obviously you got your big corporations coming in, your big commercial content and is everything's become very shiny. I mean, like I literally built a career with a post, you know, when I started making FIFA videos of Spencer and all that sort of thing, like it was, I was known as this guy who had like production value yeah, yeah. and that production value was like getting a, you know, a, bo a, 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 a tennis ball box, yeah, yeah. painting it, I can still, I can still Destiny, picture that now. And then go into a little stationery shop and ask them to print these FIFA images into cards. Yeah. And it was like, we didn't know you could do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now people are spending like a hundred grand on a video and it's like, just looks the same as everything else. Like yeah. everything looks that standard. Yeah. You know, like it's mental really. It was such right place, right time for me. I had a few ideas that were basically just a little bit more polished than some of the, and not to say they were better, but that's my niche was sort of going the extra mile in some, in some content. And basically because I was a few years older, I had a few years experience in production, I watched loads of TV growing up, so yep. all my ideas were basically rip-offs of TV shows, Wheel of Fortune, Wheel of Fortune, Karate yep. Kid, Karate Kid, like they're all just rehashed ideas. Hashtag United rip-off of Sport FC. Of course, yeah. Don't make me tell that story, Will, because you won't come out well. Well, no, you can tell, it was actually one of my questions here, I was going, well, it was, it was more FC Don's related, but if you, if you want to go head to head, um, do you think, that, you know, in the past people have ripped you off? Well, Don's definitely haven't, because I think that Don's, um, I think the Don's pre-exist hashtag as a yeah, team. Yeah. I think they do. Um, let's just get you know. Let's get into it. Well, it was you, more the opposite. You, you, you did used to hate me. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I ever hated you, Will. I think you did. No, I never. And I didn't actually. It was actually. You probably I didn't even I know. Definitely, I definitely don't hate him either. But the angle was aimed at Jack, mate. Yeah. Probably at this period of time. But Jack's a good friend of mine now. But the uh, dress. Do you want me to tell the story? You Doesn't tell the really story. Matter. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So one of the one of the original hashtag opponents was a team called 1080 football which was this sort of very new football channel that jack had set up and you were involved in it in some way capacity yeah, yeah part owner and uh <laughs> <laughs> and basically jack's like do you want to have a game i'm like we, we just need opponents no at this point. no seb got in touch with us oh, did he i don't yeah, know yeah yeah seb, seb didn't get your facts that. right mate okay right. fine it doesn't matter it does. the point is there was a game to be had yeah um and you'd lost the west ham staff we needed an easy win yeah, so we lined up some like, hands up. Yeah, yeah, we'll give you that. And so we had a game. All I knew about the channel at the time was that it was a uh, a new football channel, basically. It was 1080 it? football, just as 4K just coming out as well. So yeah, the name exactly. would never have lasted. Out of doubt, out of date. And um, and yeah, as as was the nature of hashtag then, it, every game was like a collaboration. So you'd usually have an opponent, and you'd say, "Go and follow them, go and subscribe to them, standard stuff." So obviously we did that, all good, friendly stuff. And then maybe a case of a few weeks later, 1080 football. Some suddenly becomes Sporf, Sporf FC, yeah, yeah. Um, which is obviously Sporf was like a bigger social media platform, um, like channel, uh, page. And then you release your series or whatever it was, it yeah, called yeah. Sporf FC. Yeah. So it's basically like, you know, what hashtag did it wasn't, a, I'm not saying it was a complete copy, but what we were probably the first to do because I don't like when people say we were like, like even ahead of Don's or Palmer's, we definitely weren't ahead no, of no. them. We, we actually saw that, certainly Palmer's. I saw Palmer's yeah, yeah. and was like, right, I don't want to do that because it's already being done. So it's a yeah. compliment to them that we did something different, actually. Um, but what we did do is we gamified football in a way that probably hadn't been done before. So we took like FIFA, you know, achievements and, and, you know, and having a league that other teams technically aren't in, but we're in all this sort of stuff. Yeah. And it resonated really well. And then a couple of weeks after we played 1080 football, Sporf started doing Sporf coins and all this stuff. And it was these Ooh. boys. Yeah, it's actually better than Dogecoin, we Sporf. We literally played two weeks ago. And we like shaking hands and so what's the channel? Yeah, don't worry about it. 1080 football. <laughs> Suddenly it's literally a rip off of fashion. Yeah, but we, d we didn't know. I told you this. We didn't know at sure, the time. Sure, sure. And we had a meeting literally because of the brand deal that we got because of playing. Yeah, the... I was explaining to me the chairman was fuming. Yeah. The chairman was absolutely fuming. Well, I'll have so. a word with him tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's plenty of other things I want to ask you, but I'm conscious we're obviously tonight for the big game, jumping on comm. So maybe we'll do a part two down the line. But being a hashtag, what are you thinking of me like that? Sort? <laughs> no, no, big game apparently. Really no, big game. Me. Well, it is. It's Velocity Cup. We we're in the final last year. Yeah, so, cups yeah. of cup, mate. Cups of cup, you're true. I want to Carling win Cup 2011, best day of my life. Um, do you Spurs? Beats Spurs. Arsenal. Yeah. Do you history, mate? Well, you did play minus sp five sport FC Spurs coins in for you. Some final, didn't they? No. Uh, well, maybe in this year's time. That. I feel like Obafemi Obafe Martins. Arsenal. That was Arsenal. Fair yeah, enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Don't uh, Blues and wrestling trivia. North there's London. no point. Yeah, yeah, you got that. Um, do you like football more or less than when you started hashtag? What a great question that is. Because knowing. 
not the ins and outs, but like, you know, you've met various different people across the football landscape, heard good things, heard bad things, no inner workings. Like even when we were in Liverpool, you were literally sat there doing payroll. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which is like... I forgot to do it again, actually. Yes. Yeah, sorry, we'll, we'll get round up. But like, um, yeah, do you like it more or less than since you started? I think I'd be lying if I said I like it more. And that's not to take away from anything I do here, but... I'm definitely a better football fan and that, that some people would say that's untrue because, for example, I used to be a West Ham season ticket holder and now I barely go to West Ham because it clashes with hashtag. Um, when I say a better fan, what I mean by that is I'm a much more knowledgeable fan. So I'm actually much more understanding and much more, uh, much less extreme in my views and reactions and these guys that go mad if your team win or loses and they hate managers if they do. I understand the concept of football a lot better, uh, what I'm watching and, and what goes on behind the scenes. So I think I'm a more accepting and Is that like on an emotional level? Because like, you know, like yeah, it's, think, you know, it's yeah, individual. Less, my day and year and life, life is less dictated my mood is less dictated by football, including the team I run, because you've done so much of it. You just, you, I would always say as the owner of the club, my job is not to win the games. That's yeah. the manager's job. My job is to win the seasons, which means what's your objective for that season? Did you surpass it? What's your objective for next season? So my job is done in like months and years and it's really about employing the right people and always having a plan if that thing goes wrong and, and then they do the, 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 they do the minutiae of it and you yeah. look at the macro level. So all those things combined, I think they do probably make you like football less because you're less emotionally attached to it and it becomes more of a job and it becomes more of a sort of well, and even process from, even from an outside perspective it, especially like at this level it just feels like there's so many slugs involved there's so many slugs especially like, in non-league yeah, non-league's full of slugs and um thing about football in general I would say is or sport maybe it's it's a lot of egos and, it, and I think as a person I am much better as a person for, for, for this I think I'm much more chilled much more humble and I probably was at times. And that evolution, if you like, or that, that development as a person in my character probably does make you less, yeah, like less attached to football in a way. Because not to say that if you are loving football and you're at whatever game every week and it's your life, that's a bad thing. Yeah. But I have I think anything becomes a job, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, could yeah. go and become the main I'd probably like less, yeah, yeah. wrestling tomorrow. Yeah. And 10 years from now, you'd be, you would be thinking about what else I could do. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's yeah, just yeah. the nature of the beast. Um I go into the real stuff, the Olympic stuff. Yeah, That's what the, I transitioned to. Stuff. I was just thinking then, like you saying, yeah, I'll chill out and then we'll cut to like doing comms on this game. <laughs> <laughs> that is the funny thing. I spend seven, six days a week. I'm like, yeah, I'm way more chilled now. And I'm at the game and I'm like going mad. I, but I do park it quite soon after the yeah, whistle yeah, goes, yeah, whereas yeah. it probably lived with me a bit longer. Yeah. And the other thing is I've become a parent and I think that changes you. And I think you start to see the bigger picture and these little things that would have like rocked your world before yeah. and make you go mad are kind of inconsequential now. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. Well, we've got a game to go to, so let's yeah, crack yeah, on. Yeah, it's right there. So we're, there. we're already there. Cheers, mate. Up the tags. Cheers, Bob.